The Physiology of Electrophorus Electricus by Jack Smosing. Can eel biology be made to benefit man? First, we will start off with the basics. The electric eel isn't actually an eel, but rather the most electrically advanced of the knife fish, a species of electrical fish of which the electric ray belongs to. One thing these species all have in common are special cells known as electrocytes. Electrocytes are plate-shaped, electricity-producing, muscle fiber-like cells found in the eel's electric organs. Unlike muscle fibers, though, they cannot contract. The electrocytes are stacked into multiple columns, each containing thousands of electrocytes. Electric organs each contain 50 to 1,000 columns, which are all insulated from each other until activation. Electrocytes contain a high number of potassium ions, a small amount of sodium ions, and a comparable concentration of negative ions. The cell membrane possesses channels permeable to potassium ions, but not sodium ions when neutral. When the cell is inactive, the negative voltage possessed by the cell membrane traps the potassium ions in the cell. Sodium ions are able to gain quick entrance into the cell through these channels in the cell membrane with the arrival of acetylcholine. The nervous system starts this process when it gives out the command, which it does so in the form of acetylcholine, a neurotransmitter which is a compound active in the transmission of nerve impulses. Once the neurotransmitter reaches the cell, the pathway for sodium ions is open, and the influx of positively charged ions momentarily alters the equilibrium potential of the cell, which is reestablished by letting out potassium ions on the other side. As a result, the inside and the outside of the cell connect, and its membrane potential is changed by tens of millivolts. The cell sets off its inactive neighbor into action, and a domino effect occurs. The result is a short-lived current running from the tail to the head. With the summed-up responses of the electrocytes, it is possible for the current to reach up to 600 volts and 1 ampere of current. That's five times more than a US socket. Electric organs take up four-fifths of the body, while the other 20% of the body on the anterior side contains all the other vital organs. The electricity produced by these electrocytes is utilized by the sac's organ, the main organ, and the hunter's organ. The sac's organ transmits signals at about 10 volts in amplitude up to 25 hertz from the eel, creating weak electric fields surrounding itself, in which distortions are sensed by its electroreceptors. This is known as electrolocation. Electroreceptors are located all along the body of the electric eel and determine the location and shape of objects by interpreting the time it takes each signal to bounce back, much like sonar. Electrolocation is the primary form of communication among electric eels. It is a key factor in finding and choosing a mate. It is used for navigation as its eyes are not very effective in the murky waters of the Amazon. It is also used to detect prey. The main organ, the largest of the three organs, and the hunter's organ both generate high voltage and signals out at hundreds of hertz. Can both fire many times in succession before tiring out and having to rest. Signals make prey twitch while hunting so they can locate them by means of electrolocation and then stun or kill their prey. The electric eel also has a thick 
slimy skin that covers the entire body, which serves as a protective layer from these electrical currents that they produce. The following video will show how the electric eel hunts. Kenneth Cantiana did an interesting study at Vanderbilt. They were acting like a taser, essentially causing involuntary muscle contractions to freeze up the animal so it couldn't move. The eel is remotely activating motor of neuron output that activates muscles. So they're essentially reaching into the animal's nervous system with their electric charge and remotely controlling their muscles through their peripheral nervous systems, which I think is pretty interesting. The electric eels hunters and main organ are also used as a very effective form of self-defense from predators such as jaguars, giant snakes, birds of prey, giant otters, camions, dogs, and humans. These abilities position the electric eel as an apex predator in South America, specifically in the freshwaters of the lower Amazon basins and the Orinoco River. Swedish biologist Carl Linnaeus discovered the electric eel in 1766, naming it Electrophorus electricus. Without the chemistry behind the electrocytes, protection, hunting, navigation, communication, finding a mate, and even life would not be possible for the electric eel. As far as humans, this chemistry could benefit us as well. Specially modified versions of these cells could be made to imitate, and even better, the unique electrical behavior of the electrocytes, such as increasing voltage and firing rate. Proving the worthiness of biobatteries, a team of U.S. scientists made a biobattery that can effectively power phones by using sugar as a power source. But with a modified electrocytes, so much more could be accomplished. Why? Because electrocytes can generate much more electricity, are responsive to neurotransmitters, can feed off sugar or other biomolecules, and as a biobattery, they would be more efficient and not need to be replaced, for an electrocyte could feasibly continue to produce energy as long as fuel was available to it unlike a traditional battery that will get depleted. Possible applications for these modified electrocytes include batteries for artificial hearts or if possible internal defilibrators, a power source for prosthetics, and a battery for phones. Electrocyte powered microbots could fight diseases such as cancer on a cellular level. Doctors from Ohio State University collaborated with Battelle to develop a successful trial of NeuroBridge technology, which could potentially be powered by modified electrocytes. By being able to understand the chemistry behind these cells, we might be also able to incorporate this chemistry into our bodies and reach the next step in evolution possibly gaining many of the special attributes possessed by electric eels. The physiology of the electric eel is a subject of many wonders. We have barely scratched the surface of its applications to modern science.